Hi, this is Todd Malicote, the SEO faculty for Market Motive and Online Marketing Consultant at StuntDouble.com, and I'm here today with a guide to Site Audits Part 4. We're going to look at more audit questions in 12 different areas involving information architecture, internal links, and inbound links. We've looked at 12 important areas, or we're at about 9 of 12 important areas after this section, and 40 different audit questions that we'll be using for this site audit document. We're going to create a table of contents in these 12 important areas. So in this section, we'll be covering information architecture, internal links, and inbound links, and questions surrounding those that you can incorporate into your site audit document. So we're going to start in section 6 with information architecture. The first question we have is, are there issues with the directory structure? Context is very important and topical domain authority is very important to the signals that we send to the search engines. The more that we have keywords incorporated with our URLs, with our directory structure, the more that we're internally linking these pages properly and with context, with topical information regarding anchor text, the more we're communicating to the search engines these signals and that they're important to the structure of our site. So if we have internal links and breadcrumbs and URLs that are descriptive, this is what we're looking for. This is optimization. This is the optimal outcome. The best case outcome here is URLs that are topically organized by category, subcategory, and separated by dashes. Dashes are still the best practice. You don't want to go over three or four, maybe four words, and only a dash in between words. So that's our best practice for our URLs. From this, we can ask the question of if we're laying things out effectively and we can answer and solve some of these problems once we identify them with these questions. So are there issues with the directory structure? In the case of the site that we're looking at, phishing status, absolutely. There's lots of issues uh, with our URLs. If you want a little primer on the best practices, this is from Rand and it's a, it's a great article on the subject. Just describe your content, keep it short, make it light, keywords are important. Don't use subdomains, use hyphens, and stick to these conventions and don't uh, make, make them case sensitive. Don't append uh, parameters and extraneous URLs. Uh, tracking URLs can be a problem here. Make sure that there's no issues with any of this. So those are our best practices. So if your URLs don't do that, we want to make them that way. So that's going to be our recommendation later after we investigate these areas. With regards to breadcrumbs, there's a good article on best practices and examples here. You can see a breadcrumb is just saying, you are here, this is how you get back to home. The term breadcrumb comes from Hansel and Gretel and helping you find your way around the site. Now it's a usability issue, but it's also an SEO issue because we send that signal with qualified anchor text to each of these areas. And that kind of gives a, a virtual site map, if you will, to the search engine. So this, these breadcrumbs are very important to, to the SEO of our site. So we want to make sure that they have proper bread breadcrumbs in place. This is a great example. It has examples on lots of different websites on how they organize their site, on how they use that breadcrumb, um, and how they have internal text anchor text giving that signal to the search engines of what this, this individual page is about. And that's what we're trying to do uh, in the perfect world with our URLs, with our breadcrumbs, with our site internal site architecture. So are there problems with dynamic URLs? One way that we can find this is looking in Screaming Frog and searching for question marks in our URLs. Uh, that's one way that we can do this. And we can see that we have question marks and parameters in a lot of our URLs here. Unfortunately, on this site, we do have lots of URL structure issues. And what we want to do is document those and try to organize those and try to get a category subcategory structure that is the same as the navigation that reflects the navigation that incorporates breadcrumbs to send those appropriate signals and then fix those URLs as we are able to and try to incorporate some better more descriptive URLs that kind of tell us where we're going on our website instead of just having this random uh, group of words and, and numbers and letters uh, that really isn't descriptive to our user and is not exactly optimal for search engine optimization. So returning to our document, we see our next question is, are there non-descriptive URLs? Unfortunately, there are lots of non-descriptive URLs 
on fishingstatus.com. We can see lots lots of the URLs with question marks, lots with other problems. I did an in URL search here for default.aspx on site phishing status and you can see there's lots and lots of nondescript default.aspx type of URLs. This is just extraneous information that IIS server adds and we want to remove that and get rid of that and the extraneous numbers wherever possible. Sometimes it's very difficult depending on how the development of the site was done but these are the things we're going to try to fix over time by documenting this and take it into our developer offering up our best practices and asking what it will take to make those changes. Our last question is, are there broken links throughout the site? We can find this with 404, 410, or 500 errors. We can filter this by response codes. We can check out response codes, and I'm just doing 400 error here on this. But we just want to document all the 404s. And fortunately, there's not a lot of outbound 404s here on the phishing status website. So we would check these out, make note of these, export this to a file, hand this off to our developer and say, hey, we need to take these links down. They're 404 errors. So back to our document here, the recommendations and the best practices that we're going to pass on here to our developer in this section is that we need to determine the best practice for the URL structure. Again, I mentioned category, subcategory, directory, subdirectory, including no more than two dashes in between the keywords. We want to remove those numbers. We want to remove all of the information that's just not really helpful to users in the URL. We don't want more than three subdirectories where possible. We want these organized into topical areas. We want these to be extensionless and if we have to put tracking parameters or other parameters on our URLs we want to make sure that they have a rel canonical included on those to point to the page without those parameters. We just want to create more descriptive URL overall that incorporates keywords and that creates breadcrumbs with the navigation anchor text that echoes the navigation of the website. Uh, we also want to fix those response code errors and as I mentioned use rel canonical for the URLs that are dynamic parameters. So again, we're going to go back and document each of these areas. We're going to put some screenshots in here of what the problems are, identify those by investigating in these different areas with Screaming Frog, with Google Site Search, and then we're going to set up the optimal situation and the optimal outcome in each of these areas and make these recommendations, either that they need to be fixed or ideally how to fix those areas for the developer. So the next area we're going to investigate is internal linking. And what we're looking for here is just a few simple questions. We're going to look at the top link pages on the site because we want to make sure that the pages that we're linking to most within our site are those that we have in the top level navigation or those that people are most interested in and are most likely to land on. That's where we want to be distributing that page authority, that domain authority, that link equity to the most important pages rather than just some extraneous pages. So we're going to check that out with Open Site Explorer. We're going to log into here to Open Site Explorer and run our site and we can see which pages of our top sub pages have the most page authority and internal and external links and we start getting an idea of how Google's seeing our site because those most heavily linked pages are going to be the most important and in this case it doesn't really match up the way we'd like it to we want to have maybe some of our more important pages coming up our login page our our maps pages we have some good content assets like uh, a buoys page or a uh, like I said the fishing maps page these are the places we want people linking to. We want them to find those first when they get to our website by linking those internally a lot. Some of these pages that we're finding, unfortunately, are not the ones that we would ideally have people visit first. So we can find that also with internal links in Google Webmaster Tools. That's under search traffic and then internal links. And this tells us, again, how well we're being internally linked. These these numbers are skewed a little bit high because of all the duplicate pages. So we're seeing hundreds of thousands of links to our top pages that are linked off every page because there's so many internal pages being indexed right now that this is kind of skewing this number. But again, what we're trying to find is content assets, things that should be higher in the hierarchy, 
maybe an article you wrote that was well linked that you want to link internally better. So these are the types of things that we're looking for by asking this question. So we're going to run Google Webmaster Tools, as I said, and open Site Explorer. Just take some notes about what the top pages are, what the content on those pages are. Does that match up with your top level navigation and where you're trying to push users? Because that's ultimately going to be helpful as well as sending those signals to the search engines that hey this is our most important content because we've linked it most heavily internally so take a couple screenshots from those areas export and download that table from webmaster tools and then make some commentary make some recommendations in terms of the internal linking structure and how that relates to your architecture that we talked about above those URLs how the overall organization ties together with regards to your top linked pages. You're going to want to find those in Open Site Explorer or Google Webmaster Tools. The next question we're going to look at is are there pages with too many outbound links? And the way that we're going to identify and investigate this is with Screaming Frog. So we're going to go into Screaming Frog and we're going to set to internal and then we're going to go to looking for outbound links and that is all the way over here and it's called outlinks not external outlinks so what we're going to do is sort by that in ascending order so you can see there's 390 at the top and then I'm going to export anything over a hundred if there's a lot of external links on these pages we want to make sure that we cut that down and make that make that less um, this one's so high in particular and it helped me identify another image related issue because all of the photos are coming from external sources so I, I took one of the URLs from Screaming Frog and I put this this URL in here and realize that all of these source images were coming from another website. Now we're relying on that website that could potentially be a problem. Uh, there's other issues with the images and those those images certainly won't rank on our website if they're linked on another website. So there's some things that we discovered there by asking that question and we're looking for any pages with lots of outbound links to other sites like this and if there's a high number of those we probably want to reduce those so we would make note of that and document that within our site audit information here so by asking these simple questions we can start to make a couple recommendations centered around a handful of concepts and those concepts are identifying and reorganizing those top linked pages according to our navigation according to where we want our users to go according to our our best content and we're going to identify some of those content and assets based on our top linked pages as well we want to find those content assets the things that are most unique and valuable about our site to then use those in the next section of our audit as we're creating content for inbound linking. So we need something for people to link to and want to link to because of our unique value as our website. We also want to reduce the total outbound links on pages with more than 100 links. This is a pretty pretty standard rule that, that Google has said way back when. Um, more than 100 links on a page is, is probably too many, so if you're linking that many times, we identified that with Screaming Frog, and we want to reduce those links or break up those pages somehow. The next section of our document we're going to look at and ask some questions is inbound links. And it's a shame to see this reduced to just a handful of questions here quickly because inbound linking is such a huge portion of SEO and, and doing well with the search engines. Um, however, we need to keep it simple for terms of this site audit document. You could go into 10, 20, 50, 100 questions, all kinds of information about inbound links. There's lots of tools out there to, to play in this area, but we're just going to ask a handful of questions. Firstly, is there overly optimized or repetitive anchor text? This has become a very big issue with the Penguin update with Google, and we don't want to see more than 15 to 30 percent of your overall link profile being the exact match anchor text links for commercial keyword terms. That's a best practice that's kind of changed and reduced over the years and caused some people some real headaches with, with Penguin. So we want to make sure that we're not over-optimized. I use in air quotes. You can't see my air quotes as I do them as I'm doing the video, um, but I say overly optimized because I don't really like that term. However, we don't want to use repetitive anchor text or overuse our keywords in our anchor text. So we'll run this report on 
Ahrefs. We'll go to ahrefs.com and run our website and we'll see what our anchor cloud here looks like. It looks like 22% for the brand term, 17% for the brand term. These are pretty good. Sometimes your brand and the keywords are the same thing. So for a keyword brand, this can be a little bit different. But we just need to identify and make sure that we're not kind of over those thresholds for air quotes over optimization. And we'll take this, we'll take a snapshot of this, put it into our report here, and then make those recommendations if we need more or less anchor text based on what we're targeting, based on how much optimization has been done in the past. So document that as is there overly optimized or repetitive anchor text. There's one other tool that we can use for this real quickly. Uh, it's removeem.com slash ratios.php and you can see I ran the same kind of tool here to see what the anchor text profile looked like and what the keywords were there to make sure that I wasn't air quotes over optimized. The second question we're going to ask within the inbound links section is, is there a decline in inbound links? Or hopefully we're seeing growth. Uh, and we can also do this at Ahrefs. We can see the overall trend of our inbound linking and, and see that we're, in this case, fortunately growing in terms of backlinks. Our referring domains are a little bit up and down here across the board, but we don't have that many of them to begin with. We have 20 or 30 root linking domains or root referring domains. We can check out some other cool information about our links here, but like I said, we're going to try to keep it simple to just these handful of things. In this case, our link profile has gone down a little bit. We obviously need some more links to be competitive, but overall we're not declining uh, historically too badly, so that's not a major issue. We want to identify these major issues, and that's why we're asking these important questions. And even though it's just a, a handful of questions and simple questions, these are simple questions that find those problems that can uh, really cause issue with your SEO, and that's really the, the idea behind the site audit here. So what is the link authority of the website? We want to understand and know this so that we can set expectations for what we can rank for. If we don't have high link authority or site authority, we're going to have some problems ranking with larger sites. Again, we'll check Open Site Explorer. We've looked at this a little bit before. We can see our domain authority is a 30, our page authority is a 31, um, which is a little little weird, a little strange. Usually the page authority is a little lower, um, but that is the home page of the website. So we'll look at just the overall authority of, of the site with Open Site Explorer, again here within domain authority, page authority, number of root linking domains, and then what we can do is start setting those expectations with other tools compared to our competitor. Um, we see Fishity and Fishbrain are 31 and we're a 30, so we need, we need to get that overall domain authority up there to compete with Fishy for some of these phrases that they might be competing for us for. A good example of that would be uh, the term phishing app and we can see there's not a lot of volume here um, but this could potentially be a uh, a very high uh, a very high competition search result. You can see I'm competing with Google Play uh, which it's hard to compete with the home team sometimes. Uh, Field and Stream has been around for a long time and has a fair amount of page authority uh, to that page. Uh, that's as high as our domain authority overall, and you can see that their domain authority is very high. So we use this this understanding of domain authority, of link equity, to set those expectations for what we can rank for overall and what we should target with regards to our keyword targeting. From there we would make some recommendations. And our recommendations within this section are going to focus around mainly how to improve our overall site authority. So in this particular instance it might be that we improve our site authority by doing some content outreach to our linkable assets. And those linkable assets that we identified were maybe some of the phishing reports, the phishing report feed, uh, the buoy list, the sea surface temperature reports. Uh, the other recommendations we would make would be on diversifying anchor text by maybe changing the anchor text in a widget or asking some of the people that we know to change their anchor text to us if we maybe had to run a site link with too much anchor text. So these are going to be the recommendations. We're also going to do a competitor authority comparison. So you can see that, hey, if we're a 30 and Fishity is a 40, we, we're probably not going to be able to rank for the same terms until we reach that domain authority level. So it helps to set 
expectations with your recommendations here of the types of keywords that you can rank for based on that domain authority since it is such a big piece of the equation. This area the best outcome here is having the most links. Of course, it's going to be hard to beat Adobe and Google uh, and some of the large sites that have been on the web for a long time, but it is realistic to be able to beat your competitors with regards to your page authority and acquiring the same links they do, taking a look at their backlink profile, understanding your backlink profile, and as the consultant or as the internal SEO, you can make these recommendations based on an understanding of inbound linking and the tools that come along with it. And that concludes our section on architecture, internal links, and inbound links. Thank you for joining me of part four of a guide to site audits, and I'll see you with more questions and more answers and recommendations in the final section of our site audit series.